the statues have been taken back to the ivory white as the, t the two downstairs and I've bronzed and golded the, the two plinths there and um, now working on these up panels. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sort of enjoying the process of this. I'm getting really good at lines now. <laughs> You're really getting very attached to this project, aren't you? Oh, look, I always was. I mean, that, that's why I, you know, put my hand up for this. I always have done since this back in the civic days. Today is a great milestone for the project, not just for myself, but for the project as a whole. Um, we're welcoming the public back into the space. Yeah, it's pretty satisfying. You know, to see uh, sort of some work come together. There's been a lot of talk going on about this building, and it's nice to see it actually happen. Something's happened. You know, first time in eight years we've got people in. The public the doors are open. It's really exciting. The next step for us is finishing our proposal. We'll get some shows going in here, get, get some events, and, and get the space used and we'll finish our proposal and um, sort of start a conversation with uh, sort of council and, and sort of central government and, and that kind of thing and set in place the funding side of the project and then developing a way that we can get you know, the funding that we need together. We've got X amount of funding already ourselves um, and, but we'll need topping up there. The movie business was a very lucrative business, which I'm sure is why my father got into it. At my uncle's persuasion, I might add. So I was just thinking that the lens to cope with that... Uh, the, ra the rake. The rake. Oh, it's amazing. It is. The optics. And, and for the rake, it was. It was an amazing picture. Um, the screen, of course, was quite slow. Yeah. But the picture in all, all three sections was fantastic. This machine was put in St James, I think about 1938, and they changed the, equip, the old equipment over and put the best equipment in the world into St James, and that's what these machines are, just the very best. Gone with the Wind was uh, 13, 13 reels of this size, 2,000 feet, and uh, it went for over three, I think it was three and a half, three and a quarter hours with an inter intermission in it. Of course, you had to do changeovers and uh, if you missed those cues you'd have a slight blackout block and the audience would clap and cheer and that, I've done that too and made all the mistakes, mistakes in the world. They want these at St James apparently. Yes. They've asked me can they have them or they're oh, going to put them on display. Good. But um, that's, that's history. This is not Her Majesty's first visit to the St James Theatre. She was here on Boxing Day in the coronation year to attend the premiere of the movie The Million Pound Note, uh, 10 years later in 1960. The moment that I learned we had a royal show coming, I thought, ha, now I can do what I want to do. I saw Kira Jodie and the executives, and luckily they, they had to agree with me. We got new curtains made, and uh, I re replaced all the lighting which had been out for years. So the, the, the royal performance, we had St James back as it should have looked all those years ago all relit. Prior to the stage show coming in, the raw performance, I'd been there for a, a, a week. With it. Well, I slept in the, the old man's office and to help them with the show. Her Majesty making her way up the beautiful marble staircase, a staircase imported from Italy when St James was built in 1928. One can only guess the number of patrons that have climbed these stairs 
but uh, none so regal as tonight's royal guests. We're coming down to that tail of the project where we are starting to, um, you know, there needs to be some public funds in this project and it's locking down how much, who, and, and that sort of part of it. So we're just starting to engage now with, with um, sort of stakeholders on that. We're sort of looking between 60 and 70 million for the full restoration. Yeah, that includes the seismic stuff, it's a large chunk of that. What you don't realise about this building is although it looks aesthetically in, in pretty good condition, actually everything needs to be touched on it. We need to push a button one way or another on this project. It needs to, we, you know, mothballing is not a viable solution. It's either the building stays or goes. wiring is being blamed for the fire that's damaged Auckland St James Theatre. As Alex Bourne reports, the historic building had just recently reopened after being gutted by another fire eight years ago. Someone texts me saying, hey man, there's some, uh, some fire trucks down at St James. Well, my first thoughts were, oh, it's probably the building next door, no one's called me, someone would have called me. But I thought, oh no, look, I'd better get up and better head down there. So I got down here and sure enough, it was, um, fortunately it was for us. Was it like your worst nightmare? Yeah, it was. Yeah, you, you feel like I've got a lot of time in here and it, it, hopefully we're not too late. We'll be absolutely gutted if it's too late. The fire service walked me in and um, I showed them access throughout the theatre. It was just a bit of a rebel wire. Had a good look and it was still smoking. So I'm going to actually leave you with um, everything. Okay. Um, and if your insurance want to see it, you'll have all of it. Yep. So we'll put it in this bag with the lighter and everything and you can um, Give it to do it. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yep. So where was that? Was that down there, was it? Yeah, that was down in the area. It wasn't exactly in the area of origin, but it was to the side of it. It was within yeah, okay. a little bit. Interesting. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. And how old is this cable? Can you age? Is this old cable? Oh, or this is... is really old cable. Yep, it was yep. all through metal conduit, conduit. But the problem is, is the metal conduit had broken. Got it. That's so how it's so, got it's, it. Yep, it's so old um, that, you know. Hey, George. Yep. Interesting here. Electrical. This stuff was inside the conduit, but the conduit had broken, and it, it's beaded right, like this. Key. Yeah. You've melted bits on the ends? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. So it's probably, probably old rubber insulation that's come literally at the end of its life. And, but the, it's only happened where the metal conduit is broken. Yeah. So is this is a really slow broken or fire. Come, come apart, was it? Or? Broken, and, and this heat's come apart, but it's broken as well. Mm. Um, it's a very slow burning fire. Um, so it's been chewing and charring away and smouldering for a long time. Really? Um, and, and, you know, it hasn't been a fast fire. Now, you can tell that by the thickness of the charring on the yeah. wood patterns. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at smouldering for, for quite a few hours. So there's hours. no debris under there that's there's been nothing. burning. It's just this no. igniting the wood adjacent yep. to the conduit. Yep. It's the sort of problem in a building of this age that can happen at almost any time. And I guess, you know, while we're at this stage early in the project, having restored and opened the lobby, still looking to put together the finance to do the major restoration, and that's yet to be actually put to bed totally. But it's a wake-up call in many senses to the fact that we've got to really try and get that money together and get on with this and renew all the services and stop the risk of this sort of thing happening and not bad old electrics. Are you worried this could be a setback, though? To the, to the restoration no. process? No, I don't think it's going to affect the programme at all. It's burnt a hole in the floor on the other side of the auditorium. That's the floor that's got to be replaced anyway. Um, no, it, it's mercifully sufficiently minor that it's not really going to affect things. 